Okay, it's 9.15 on February 27th. I want to talk about that gas again. <laughs> we had an interesting day. We have some new developments. I thought I would put together a quick video and talk about them. So here we are. Let's get going. We've got the trades that came in this morning at 9.23 and 9.30 on Boyle. Uh, both ranked in the top 30, both in the 99th percentile. These caught my eye. Immediately I looked to see where they came. <clears throat> and it was no surprise they came right here at the high. And uh, the first one printed almost at the exact high. The second one printed right after that. And we got a decent sell. We got sell from 650 to 610. Um, I don't know, do the math, but enough percents to be meaningful. Um, and then we got, because uh, because this is leverage and because we so often see this, we got a bounce and we got another nominal new high here. Tiny little tick above, which, while surprising, I guess maybe I shouldn't be surprised. I talk about this enough, but uh, I kind of thought these cells would uh, be sufficient. But it rallied, it came back down, rallied, made a new high on the day, uh, but there was no volume up here. And uh, looks like it sold a little bit right after that, too, and kind of drifted into the close. I think both of these were sells, even if price does continue up just a little bit further. I don't think it makes a ton of sense for these to be buys, only to have a, I don't know, from 650 to 610 is a, you know, 7 or 8% sell right off the bat. I think that um, they're selling into strength here, and price reflected that. Even though they brought it right back up, maybe they had a little bit more to sell. Um, I don't know. But the point is, uh, I think those were sells. And um, I know we've only been off the low in that gas for a week and a little bit longer than a week, maybe. But um, I, I think that it's, I think gas and boil are due for a pullback. Here's the chart if you zoom out uh, a couple of weeks. And you can see this is where the low was made, just above four. Um, the spot that these two trades arrived is maybe not a surprise in hindsight. If you look, you can see that there was some resistance up here. These two lines here show clusters of where previous trades had been, uh, where institutional dollars were spent. You can see that the vol profile suggests that uh, a lot of activity was happening up here. It did turn down after the first two trades. It came back up and it turned down again, um, just as it turned here, just as it turned here. So <clears throat> this is, I don't think, an indication that we're going to get new lows or anything. I just think that it price hit resistance and institutions sold and are looking for a pullback. If you zoom out further, you can see also uh, this goes back to January and there was a lot of activity in this zone for Boyle for, since the beginning of February. So I think it's a, a reasonable spot to expect a pause. I, I don't, I realize that the uh, gas has gone down for nine or eight or nine months or something like that and it's been almost a straight line and this is just a tiny little blip and it you know it's reasonable to expect a lot more rallying to ensue before any kind of meaningful pullback but um, you know it's hard to argue with the trades we saw two big ones come in we saw price turn down I think that that's a pretty strong signal that they are selling into it whether it makes sense to us or not um, if you look at gas, similar chart, <clears throat> a lot of volume in here. We didn't get any trades in gas, we didn't get any right here at the low either, we didn't get any up here at the high, so um, the trades that we're seeing seem um, exclusive to the leveraged ETFs for whatever reason. But um, this is a zone that has turned price down in the past. This $9 zone turned it down here, came back up, it tried again, turned down, came back up, turned, turned down. So you know, it's resistance. And you, I don't think it's reasonable in most cases to expect price to get through resistance uh, on the first try. It, it happens, but I don't know that it's the default expectation. So any kind of a pullback here makes sense to me, at least. Uh, I don't think that, you know, not to repeat myself, I don't think it means new lows. I think some kind of pullback, some kind of shallow uh, cool off breather of some sort. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what sealed this for me is this cold print that we got at the end of the day. 
Um, it's not the biggest print you'll ever see, but it is ranked. It's in the top 50. It ranks 43rd. Um, and these small, cold prints are, are small because it's thin. Um, that number one trade we saw a couple weeks ago was really, really large for cold, but maybe not really, really large for a lot of things. But uh, well, you saw what happened. So this came in, which suggests to me that maybe some kind of low in cold, intermediate or local low is being made to coincide with the trades we got here at the high in boil. It would make sense. It would be less likely, in my opinion, that they bought more boil here and that they sold cold at the low. Anything's possible, but that's not typically what you see. If you zoom out, this is since February 3rd, I put all the all the trades on here that are ranked in the last few weeks for cold. We got this one, which turned down, which we expected. We got this one, which we got some overshoot, which we talked about was possible. And then we got the turn down, and then we got a really nice good sell going after price breached that, that level. So we got that one FU spike. We got the steep sell, we got bounce, which they sold as well. And now we got this down here. This doesn't make sense to me as more selling. I'll again caveat that by saying anything's possible, weird stuff happens, it is still nat gas, but probabilities suggest to me that this is a cover or a buy, which would in turn suggest that some kind of bounce would ensue. And if I had to guess, I'd say maybe they're going to bounce it back up here to this, this range, this 60 to 63 range, somewhere in here. Um, which would let gas pull back a little and cool off. If you go back even further, uh, you can see again, this trade came here, we got a little selling, got some chop, we got the big one, the overshoot, and now here. And this landed uh, right on this line, this trade cluster, 5270, which was uh, support here and resistance here, and price has come all the way back and stopped here and it makes sense when you think about it that it stopped here because the next stop lower is way down here uh, and stocks don't move in a straight line this is going to have some uh, some bounces along the way it's going to have some some steep moves like we got here um, on longer time frames I do expect gas to um, move upward but I don't expect it to happen directly uh, in fact, especially with gas, I don't expect it to happen directly. This is going to be difficult and frustrating for all players on both sides of this, as gas always is. So, we got three trades here, cold and boil. We didn't get any in UNG. Um, so these these moves are being fueled by the leverage trades. There, There's not any substantive positioning in the underlying over the last two or so weeks um, but we got three trades all ranked um, all meaningful despite the fact that you might look at these numbers and say well it's just three million dollars it's just six million dollars it's five million dollars I mean yeah if that was spy or apple that would be a blip that would be a, you know of no consequence whatsoever but for these leveraged gas ETFs they are among the largest trades in its entire trading history. So here we are many, many, many years into trading boil and cold. And these two are in the top 20 and this was in the top 50. So it's worth paying attention to. So, uh, yeah, we got some selling. What I think is selling here. We got a nominal high. We got some buying here. What I think is buying. We got it consistent with, uh, a level here of importance on cold and um, and I'm expecting some kind of a bounce in cold some kind of pullback in UNG and boil and that gas futures I don't know how deep I don't know how long it'll last I don't even know if it will be deep at all it could just be shallow or it could be uh, one of those situations where price just uh, flattens out for a little while and chops in a range but um, I think it needs to cool off after this move from here from the 22nd until now which I get in the grand scheme of NAT gas is relatively small given how far it's fallen since last uh, August or so but in shorter time frames it's a meaningful move and we have two big institutional trades here that are telling us to pay attention and so I'm going to pay attention and um, 
we'll see what happens next. Um, that's all I have. I'm excited about this because we're getting a lot of action in this, and um, it's moving. And I think it's uh, uh, so far these trades have been, at least for me, very helpful in determining direction and intent um, on the shorter time frames. So that's all I have to share. I hope this helps, guys. If you have questions, send me an email. Find me on Twitter. You know the drill. Um, if you haven't tried this product before, it's really simple to learn. You can sign up, try it for a week. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. But there's nothing to lose. And um, you can get comfortable with how it works. You can watch institutions trade. You can see how price behaves when they do. And, um, you know, ask me questions if you're curious or interested or stuck or anything. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks for your time. Talk to you soon. Bye.